Hi, third grade readers. Today we are going to continue with our nonfiction work. Remember, I'm sharing my screen so that you can follow along and pay attention to different images or words. Okie doke. So, reading to learn. We are nonfiction readers. We are reading to get more information about different topics. And this week, we are learning how to find the main idea of our books. Our learning target is that we can find the main idea of our nonfiction text. And readers do this by two things that we know so far. We know that they ask, what is this text mostly about? They take the who and the what, and that makes up, what is this text mostly about? And they also find the pop-out sentence. The pop-out sentence, remember, tells us, hey, this is what you're about to read about. This is what the text is going to be mostly about. It just directs us and tells our brain, okay, so this is what I'm going to be reading about. It's a heading in disguise. Remember, headings tell you what you're going to be reading about. You learned that when we talked about text features. Today, finally, we are going to be learning about important details that help us find and prove our main idea, and I'm so excited. Main idea and details go together so well, they depend on each other. Supporting details explain more about the main idea. Supporting details are more specific things about the main idea. So our main idea is always at the top. It's like that heading. It's what the book is going to be about or what that section of the book is going to be about. Underneath, the supporting details are those details that tell us more about that main idea. They're all things that point back to that main idea saying, yup, this all has to do with that main idea. All the details will have something in common. They will all fall under and fit in with that main idea. The main idea and supporting details go together like peanut butter and jelly, cookies and milk, or bees and honey. You need the two together. The main idea is what all of the supporting details are generally about. The supporting details are just a little more specific. It's again like zooming in. If you are unsure about your main idea at first, these supporting details can help prove your main idea. If you keep reading, you say, okay, yeah, all these really important supporting details in my book are about this main idea. Let's practice together with a life cycles book. In just a moment, will I get that up? Okay. So this is my nonfiction text. This is my Life Cycles book, and this is a certain section of the Life Cycles book. We are going to start by finding the main idea and the details of just this section. So that heading, Slippery Salamanders. Let's read first. I might point out the pop-out sentence to help us. Amphibians are animals that can live underwater and on land. Okay. So it's telling us already that we are going to be reading about different amphibians and even more specifically, salamanders. Salamanders are a type of amphibian. And we know that this whole book is about life cycles. So I'm thinking must be, this is going to be about salamanders changing or salamanders experiencing change or going through change. But I have to keep reading to make sure that that's what my main idea is. I need to see if that's what this text is mostly about. Some live on land and some live in water. Most salamanders lay eggs in water or on the wet ground. When the eggs hatch, the tadpole stage begins. These tadpoles look like tiny adults. They use their tails to help them swim. Their gills help them breathe underwater. Salamanders that live on land go through complete metamorphosis. Their fins and gills disappear. They grow lungs and legs, but some salamanders are different. 
the ones known as mud puppies grow legs, but they also keep their fins and gills so they can keep living in water. Their life cycles can span a few months or five years. Okay, well, after reading that, I, the whole thing was about salamanders going through change. And I'm saying that in my own words. And I'm deciding that that's my main idea. The pop-out sentence pointed to that. And that's my main idea based on what it's mostly about. And I'm going to be able to find those supporting details to prove it. I've got three things. This is mostly about salamanders changing. The pop-out sentence points to salamanders changing. And I have enough supporting details to show that salamanders change. Let's go ahead over to my organizer so I can say what the main idea and supporting details are. So again, the main idea right up here in my box is going to be salamanders go through change. And I'm gonna stop my screen share so you can see this bigger. Salamanders go through change. That's my main idea. And now I remember reading a lot of different things, a lot of specific details that showed me how salamanders go through change. It proves that point. It proves my main idea. Now, one of those things is that salamanders grow legs. That's a change, growing, getting a new body part. Salamanders grow legs. That's a really important detail to me. Another important detail that I could go back in my text and find is that salamanders also grow lungs. So that means they have to live out of water. So salamanders grow lungs and, now I'm being specific, I'm adding a lot of details, and have to change where they live. So we know my main idea, salamanders go through change. I'm proving that. Salamanders grow legs, that's a big change, and I read it in my book, that's a supporting detail. And salamanders grow lungs and have to change where they live. Those are huge changes. I can go back and find another detail. Okay, so it says, that salamanders go through metamorphosis. And that word metamorphosis means change. That's another big change, a big idea. I'm gonna add it at the bottom. Salamanders go through metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. So we have those three details that really point back to how salamanders go through change. I'm going to go back to our presentation now so that you can see how I want you to be writing your main idea and the supporting details. Now, you'll see that I've been doing it this way, and you all will learn how to do it this way too. I put my main ideas on the top in that box. And then I have bullet points below it with my supporting details. This is a graphic organizer called Boxes and Bullets. This is how you will be expected to write your main idea and the supporting details. It's nicely organized. It shows that the supporting details help 
hold up that main idea. They all fall under the category of that main idea, and you can really see that here. The bullets all go together and all fall under that main idea. They all belong with that main idea because they're all about the same thing. All of my supporting details were about salamanders going through change. Again, we can't forget about our other important things we've learned. Readers find the main idea of the book and they do this by thinking about the who and the what put together to make what the text is mostly about. They also look for that pop out sentence that says, hey, this is what you're about to read about. And they also collect details that explain more about that main idea. This is a big task. It's going to show that you're a mature reader who really understands and comprehends what the book is teaching you and what the point of the book is. It's not just the topic. It's in the second grade. We're reaching up to always find the main idea and the details because remember, they are go together in a little package. They're like peanut butter and jelly. That main idea is the bow on top explaining what will be inside the package all the supporting details that will really teach you more specifically about that main idea.